Bill Panoff here for Porthole Cruise Magazine. When cruising came to a halt, little did we know that it would be more than a year before we set foot on our favorite islands in the Caribbean. As the vaccine rollouts continue to ramp up, we're looking forward to getting back on the water and starting to plan our next vacation. Where are we going? Joining me today to talk about one of the most beautiful islands in the Caribbean and how they are continuing to build a safe environment for cruisers, travelers in this new world environment is the Minister of Tourism, Economic Affairs, Transportation, and Telecommunications, the Honorable Miss Lumilla De Weaver. Lumilla, how are you? I'm good, and thank you for having me. Very, very nice to see you. Some exciting news happening uh, as it relates to the island of St. Martin. Celebrity Cruises is set to start sailing from St. Martin in June. How will that impact the island? This is really exciting. It's going to have a huge impact on the island, actually, because, you know, like uh, some of the other islands that had, you know, suffered major damage from hurricanes over the last four years, we were pretty much struggling to come back um, after our major hurricane in 2017. So while uh, we saw some hotels open up last week since that damage, uh, the news of this um, cruise home porting of, of uh, celebrity home porting is amazing because uh, it'll be have more more air you know more travelers more air traffic coming in um, sure. it's going to be a sort of you know a boost basically uh, a sort of I see it as a as a fast track to what we needed to have happen over the three years happening today and I'm excited about the fact that it's a good thing for investors looking coming to the island because sure. they know that they can the, um, you know, higher numbers of overnight guests. It's a big plus for our taxi drivers, our tour companies, our restaurants, everything. Um, if anyone's familiar with uh, with St. Martin, Phillipsburg is our capital where the cruises come into, and we have suffered drastically, majorly, um, with many shop closures because of this pandemic. And I'm, you know, it's not a unheard of story for the rest of the Caribbean or other um, tourist destinations, but. For us, uh, it's a it's a good sign, and it's hopeful, especially after the year. Um, I'd, I'd say now about a year and a half we've had since the start of this pandemic. It's uh, great news, and I am looking forward. So this may be the beginning of many more to follow as well. I, I yes, absolutely. The conversations will stay there. This is uh, you know we've had smaller cruises here before um, sure. to home port for a period, and not this size, and. It's an incredible opportunity for us to uh, level up our airport, which is still under reconstruction, as well as level up our hotels, our overall service. And I think now is a time that if you didn't get an opportunity like this, uh, you know, it's a time to like be ready, get an opportunity, and it's a boost for everyone else as well. So I'm, sure. I am hopeful. I see that uh, this is going to bring many, many more. Uh, opportunities and discussions for home porting and it's going to change the industry a bit and I and I hope that uh, it will remain there for a long time not that Absolutely. I don't love coming to Florida start off cruises <laughs> but you know it's really nice. a couple Absolutely. options in the so sure what is the greatest change you've seen on the island of St. Martin over this past year this, this pandemic uh, gave us an opportunity to sort of focus on the areas that needed to be fixed over the years, um, over the years that we didn't have the time to fix uh, because we were just busy and just letting people come in. It gave us a little bit of a breather um, to strengthen any policies that were missing, especially in maritime affairs, the things that had a, needed a little bit of tightening up. So um, I've also seen a sort of a re, well, what would, I would say like a, uh, a real awakening of how important the service sector is. Um, and so you're seeing the importance of, of uh, customer service training, uh, just, you know, marketing, <laughs> making sure that we can market things in the right way. But yeah. for us, it was a time to, you know, it was a, it was a time for the island to sit back, reflect and see where can we improve? So two of the areas that I saw um, getting the most attention was actually the fact that we needed to, you know, focus on our customer service, maintain that friendly island attitude, um, and then as well as uh, changing and shifting our tourist product again to incorporate way more of our culture in it. So that is what I have seen because it's also been important important for me for that tourist part of my uh, portfolio, and uh, I am so hopeful that the visitors uh, will appreciate the changes that they're going to see coming from St. Martin. During the uh, pandemic, uh, St. Martin had maintained a very relatively low COVID-19 cases compared to other Caribbean islands. 
What protocols have you put in place to protect travelers and citizens from potential inf infection? And so we actually, just to make sure that we, one of the things that we were lucky with uh, and that happened with dialogue and being realistic of the fact that we are predominantly a tourist destination with an economy based over 80% on tourism. So sure. when you realize that fact, when you realize that fact, then you, you, you know that we have to be open as fast as possible and uh, with minimal barriers as possible uh, to allow us to be as safe as possible. So for visitors coming in, we have always, since we opened, we have always maintained some sort of testing to arrive. Uh, now, if you if now it's an um, antigen test that is FDA approved or EUA authorization um, within 48 hours from the US only, everyone else has to do PCR tests uh, within 72 hours if you're coming from the US, you have up to five days to do it. And that is what it is in combination with the insurance that we've implemented. So very early on in the pandemic, um, before we closed our airspace, I noticed that uh, there was the potential to have negative publicity in the Caribbean region because we have limited medical resources, as sure. well as um, you know the impact on a tourist destination for any negative stories as in someone getting COVID, someone getting stuck there, uh, someone saying that they could not get medical attention that they are used to in their home country. So I knew that having this medical evacuation option was extremely important because that's what I also looked for when I was traveling abroad. And um, that's how we've implemented the insurance. It's very similar to what uh, Aruba has done. One of the reasons for the implementation of an insurance like that is because it also uh, lessened the burden on governments. So because this was a pandemic we were dealing with, the financial, uh, uh, how do you say, responsibility lies with the government because of the fact mm -hmm. that it was a pandemic. We were trying to, when we, we, when we got out of the state of emergency, we said, uh, that, all right, let's see how we can kind of find a balance. And it was a, a commune, um, how do you say? I wanted, I wanted it to be a pool of all the insurance companies so that it, right. it would be a level playing field, that it wasn't preferential treatment, favoritism with any um, particular company. And that's what we've had. I've gotten really, really great feedback about it because I know a lot of people were worried about it. It's been sure. extremely um, easy. In addition, this insurance is all linked with the online portal that we have for persons to enter all of their information, up upload their testing, and then getting approval. Now that approval, just so people know, because it's been in, so we've had this uh, authorization form. It's on St. Martin Entry, S-T-M-W-A-R-T-E-N, entry.com. Uh -huh. And uh, in there, and there's where you fill in a stuff, upload your test, and it's a human being that's actually checking it, not an algorithm. Uh, so we have a huge team that's uh, co you know, a combination of like, uh, the public health side as well as the tourism side to uh, approve. So there's, I think there's an algorithm only for residents that you know, allows it to be processed quickly, but for everyone else, we do manually go through your tests. Uh, to make sure that it is an acceptable test. And I am so sorry it took me so long to explain all of that, but that is how you enter the country. I do want to say though, that because of the, the variants that you have going around the world, sure. uh, we do have a travel ban in effect. All of that is also on, uh, on the platform online um, where you can see what the country risk ratings are or what the banned countries are. It's predominantly South America and uh, South Africa. UK has been lifted, so we welcome persons coming. There are testing centers uh, strategically located all around the island, obviously, for people who need a negative yeah. PCR test yeah. in order to return to their home country. That is that is correct. Um, I think it was in January where CDC changed it for persons returning to the US and they accept PCR tests or antigen tests. They have uh, the airport this week actually just, just set up a facility. It's a little bit more expensive than the other locations because of the convenience of having uh -huh. it right there and, get, and you have to travel last minute and didn't prepare. Um, and then uh, we have uh, a lot of our doctors, our general practitioners are doing it. Um, the, we have some labs that are doing it. On the front side, you also have pharmacies doing it. So it's readily, readily available. Gotcha. How long do you think it'll take the island uh, to return to the numbers it once enjoyed uh, pre-COVID? You know, in our forecast, um, we were looking at towards the end of next year. Uh, oh, you know, sure. the next, next 
season because we had an incredible yacht season. We were one of the few islands, again, that you know, we were early, we were decision makers that was based on the calculated risk. Uh, you know, I guess my background of finance, uh, finance and risk management uh, came uh -huh. into play. It was all, I needed data to, to basically make these decisions, but sure. we were, our decisions were good early on because we opened up for the yacht and sector and, it, and the yacht and sector was doing amazingly well until we had uh, changes in the, the French ban where they were closed off. So of course, you know, one of the big things for the yachting season here is Simbarts is close by. And there was, it was easy open, you know, open access to Simbarts. And then we had a early termination to that. So the yachting season was almost back to normal um, oh, wow. because we were one of those places that were uh, the, the few that were open, entirely open. And when, for the rest of the travel, uh, in terms of the numbers, we are really hoping that by the it, our forecast will be correct that by the end of 22, we will Thank see you. the number in beforehand. Now that's been super duper, um, you know, optimistic, uh, 22, 22, 23. Um, by 23 is when they were calculating that the airport would also be completed. And right. so you know, we have a couple, I don't know if you guys are aware, if you heard that we have a, a new hotel development that's happening here with a big name, a, a well-known name that's coming in. So that's all going to contribute oh, to wow. us space, um, you know, attracting more people and accommodating more people, especially with this home porting is all good news because they were like, that's great. Yay, same back on track. So Awesome. Awesome. How long before all citizens of St. Martin are vaccinated? And are you working with the Dutch or French governments to speed up this process? I guess it's a little of both. I'm actually just going to um, dip into my phone right now and see if I can see anything. The Dutch side has been incredible with their vaccination rollout. Oh, wow. We we have you know that we have had a positive response besides you know the negative new you know the negative sort of attention around vaccines that are that's going like you know wildfire all over the place. But sure. The, Right. I mean, we, it's incredible how much we've done in a little time. We started late February. And I believe that's why I wanted to just make sure I had that information handy. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. The front side is a little bit slower. That's what I can say. I'm, uh -huh. I'm really hoping okay. the original plan, the rollout of the vaccination plan for the Dutch side, I can say, was that they would, uh, based on their estimate, that they were going to be done by June by the end of oh. June. Um, it started out a little bit slow, but now it's actually picking up traction. And um, the uh, we're vaccinated. Like, so yesterday, I know from one center, yesterday we did over 320 vaccinations in a day, wow. which is incredible. That's impressive. Um, and, it, and it keeps increasing more and more. That's, but, great. That's uh, great news. So, let's see. So far, since we started at the end of February, we have 7,352 persons vaccinated. Wow. Um, means, wow. yeah, yeah, that's incredible. Um, yeah. it, it's going well, it's going very well. And yesterday I visited them uh, at one of the centers that uh -huh. one of the largest centers for the, vac the vaccination. And I couldn't believe the lines that I saw and the people that I saw outside and they wanna now double the capacity that they, that they have, which is incredible. So that's basically a, the amazing. super vaccine Better, the you know the better uh, the better it is for us because that's what everyone's looking for to travel mm -hmm. even though we're not requiring it but it's it's, um, it's a good move. Yeah, I applaud you on the response. Uh, the reception is, is phenomenal. That's uh, wow. The St. Martin Heineken Regatta, one of the island's most popular events, has been canceled this year. Are you planning to bring it back in 2022? Oh, without a doubt. If you, we don't have a crazy uh, you know, event like COVID-19, that was the hardest decision for us to make was to, sure. was to have to cancel that. And, you know, it was just around the time that you had the, the news of the new strains coming out and the new variants coming out. And again, you had uh, some hesitation and slight fear of um, whether, you know, maybe, maybe this is not the right thing right now for us to, to be doing these mass gatherings. Oh. Uh, right. And unfortunately, that affected not only Heineken Regatta, but also our carnival that everyone was looking forward to. Um, so either one of those things, uh, I can't foresee them being canceled unless um, we have a pandemic like this going on. Good. 
Fi final question. Something a first time visitor to St. Martin has to experience. Like if you had a bucket list going to St. Martin for the first time, what would be at the top of the bucket list? I, I'm, a, I'm a boat person, I'm a captain. Right. Uh, oh, wow. So, oh. so I, I, yeah, I'm, I do a lot of stuff. <laughs> so I, I really would always, if people don't have any fear of the water, I would always say for them to, to do a round the island trip and then just stop off at one of the beaches and eat because that's just really experience it. And it at its best. And of course, what I can say that everyone loves doing when they come here is the typical watching the airplanes land at Maho. Right. Um, one of the zip lines, we have three of them on the island. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, so it's um, though the other part I think would be uh, food. The food here is incredible. That's the one thing we have an advantage on over the other islands. We've always been known for our restaurants on both the French uh -huh. and the Dutch. So you come here and you have to be a, a, a gourmand, you know, like you, you, you have to try everything. The, right, it's incredible. Right, Every, right. On the side of the road, in a fancy restaurant, in a hotel, it's incredible. Well, well the Honorable Lou Miller de Weaver, Minister of Tourism, Economic Affairs, Transportation and Telecommunication. Thank you so much for this very insightful interview. And uh, before you know it, uh, business will be back to normal. The cruise ships will be coming. And, and by the way, Porthole Cruise Magazine is celebrating 25 years this, uh, this week, 25 years. So that's why I have a, a glass here. So here's to Porthole, here's, here's to the island of St. Martin.